What if all this is a lie? What if this is fixed? Corruption already touches everything in Kenya, so why not sports? More specifically, why not football? Match fixing eco. At least the same season in Wazuri Sana. Kama meji me fixiwa, masapi kendo traumia. Ika ilem tota me copy exam na ona. Ame pita la kini siya. Siya kikoevo sezi feel poa. Una feel down. Eliata unge kam. Eliata unge kam. The love of money is the root of all evil. In Kenyan street lingo, it's known as kutupa game. That translates to throwing a game, what is globally known as match fixing. It's an intricate web that uses match officials and players, often defenders and goalkeepers, to determine the outcome of a match for financial gain. Some of the players you never thought would uh, be caught up in a scandal, uh, had the biggest scandals very hidden from the public eye. In February 2020, FIFA banned four East African players for manipulation of matches during the 2019 Kenyan Premier League season. Three of those, Moses Chikati, Festus Okiring, and Festo Omukoto, are Kenyan and were banned for four years each. The fourth, George Mandela, a Ugandan, received a life ban. Turn and pass. Don't just pass anyhow. All four were Kakamega Homeboys FC players that featured in the Kenyan Premier League. The club's owner, Cleophas Shimanyula, was the whistleblower. Unaona style hilo in game in a chase on a stuka in Mambogan. Unakuta defender wako, ambao na tegemea, the anafunga anafungia opponent team goal. So mimi ni kajuliza maswali, ilikuwa game karibu mara tatu. So ni kujuliza ni kafanya uchunguzi wangu wa kutosha, ni kapata kwa mba kumbe, hii watu wanalipua, wachezaji wanalipua, kocha wanalipua. It highlights our game very badly because now people begin viewing Kenya as a match-fixing nation. The mamas of match-fixing in the KPL keep growing louder. A lot of match-fixing, na most of uh, is match-fixing. Our cartels ambao wanafanyo match-fixing wana to target CC watu wa media. They offer at least 5,000 USD and with the stakes so high, then physical harm is a reality. They threaten you can talk one jack on a cutting league attack manipulate games so no can pig a mile. It's becoming rampant. Baga Sasa to me as a Kogo, but we, we are fearing for our lives. Eli Kalekwa, popularly known as Presda, is the founding owner of 2009 KPL champions Sofa Parker. Kalekwa, who has been a fixture on the Kenyan football scene for the last 16 years, almost fell victim to suspected match fixers from Singapore, who posed as sponsors but who made curious demands before the signing of a one year deal in June 2019. One year, Katwambia, 30 million. Lakini kwa hiyo, tuko na condition. Ambayo company kuna itwa Living Trade. Condition tuko na yo. Tutawaletikuna some players international because tunataka team ambao yuko strong. Tutawalete international players au hawako kwenye na sisi benye njoo tutakuwa tunawalipa. Na tutawaletea culture, professional coach. Majority of those players were from Uganda. Tukawanza kubawuna suspect. Mchazaji moja digitolea. Haka kuja kaniambia no, bali mu propose. Mamu pepesa. Joel Kwanam Patia 200,000 Kenya money shillings. A cash strapped Sony Sugar FC, which was relegated from the KPL this season due to handing out three walkovers, also had a brush with suspected match fixes, what also posed as sponsors from Singapore. Sony, but to propose 20 to chase a Sony. Can be a one. Friendly. Friendly. Season to go to Sony, when you're going to chase a Sony, I'm a Five months ago, KPL outfit Zoo FC released seven players from its books with accusations of match fixing. Both Sony and Zoo FC officials declined NTV Sports' request for comment. 
Outspoken owner of KPL Moneybags Wazito FC has also taken to social media to raise questions about match fixing in Kenya's top flight league. And all this must be backed with evidence. In the event that we don't have evidence, definitely you cannot pick up a case. But if uh, we have evidence, then that's a criminal offense. And uh, in the world of football, we do not expect people to be engaged in match, match manipulation and match fixing. Match fixing for Kenya, na tuku saidiwa na federation, ata KPL yiku tusaidia. Because wao wote tukua tukiongea na wao, wanatuambia ongeeni na federation. Tukiongea na federation, hakuna barua tuliandika kama ishirin. Hakuna ta moja tulijibiwa. While KPL and the Football Kenya Federation seem to be blindsided by the scourge of match fixing in the country, the world governing body FIFA appears to have its hand on the pulse. There are three main um, statutes that FIFA has dealing with corruption, bribery, and match fixing. So that's the FIFA disciplinary code, the FIFA code of ethics, and the FIFA code of conduct. The stain of match fixing goes to the very highest level of football in the country, touching on the national football team, the Harambe Stars. Former Harambe Stars defender George Wise Owino remains the most high profile proven case of match fixing. Owino was handed a 10 year ban from all football related activities by the world football governing body, FIFA, for match fixing, as well as a 1.5 million shillings fine. Ni hujuma kwa mashabiki, ni hujuma. Ni hujuma. Aje sema tu ni hujuma. I think that guy just killed it. Yeah. Being somebody who played uh, with Wise, uh, who has played with Wise uh, in the national team, I'm finding uh, I'm finding that really, really hard to believe. Uh, I've tried to recall uh, the few matches that we played together. I've tried, uh, you know, to go back and see whether there was an incident where mm, I think maybe he might have done, uh, you know, anything uh, uh, to, to, to help uh, the opponents win. Uh, but honestly, I, I, I can't go back. I can't get that moment. I cannot get it. Wise was heavily linked to Singaporean Wilson Raj Perumal, one of the world's most notorious match fixers. Perumal has admitted to having strong ties with both the Kenyan and Nigerian football federations at the time. Um, I can recall... NTV spoke to an insider in the previous Kenyan football administration who interacted with Perumal during his visits to Kenya. I met Wilson around... Uh, 2009 at uh, Safari Park Hotel uh, in the company of uh, ex uh, uh, Football Kenya Limited by then officials. Um, and uh, he had organized a meeting requesting to, her, uh, to get a letter from FKF, an authority letter from uh, Football Kenya Limited to become a FIFA licensed uh, match agent. Uh, in that meeting was uh, former FKF uh, top brass officials and a referee uh, committee chairman at that particular time. What he wanted was to organize some two friendly matches with the Rambi Stars uh, in, in, in Bahrain and in Yemen. Nations Port obtained email transcripts showing Perumal and Owino conspiring to influence the result of at least 14 international matches involving Kenya and trying to recruit other players to fix games. The World Cup qualifier between Kenya and Nigeria in 2009 was among the 14 that the Singaporean had a direct hand in influencing. The Super Eagles' 3-2 win guaranteed Nigeria a World Cup ticket. Our source would meet Perumal again before the Nile Basin football tournament, which was a Seven Nations football championship in 2011, contested in Egypt. Kenya's dismal results of just one win in four games served only to worsen the country's FIFA rankings, begging the question of just why the Harambe Stars participated in the first place. That was the first uh, contact uh, between uh, the Federation and uh, Wilson, as they called him. That was the second time we also, he also thought, sought for, 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 
a letter authorizing him to take care of the national team. Questions arise over the remedial measures meted out on those guilty of match fixing. With the Ministry of Sports pushing a bid to criminalize doping, should match manipulation also attract a similar penalty? It's not a criminal affair, it's not a civil affair, so you can't arrest these people and take them to court. If he's already stopped playing, he's retired, what are you going to do to a man who most likely does not want to come back to football? And also trying to get him to pay that one million Kenyan bob, a bit tough. How can you get the state to intervene and pay a fine to a private organization, which is what FIFA is? Tough. In a statement to NTV, the World Football Governing Body says, in line with its zero-tolerance approach to match manipulation, FIFA has also further strengthened sanctions against anyone found guilty of match-fixing recently. Anyone found guilty will be subject to severe sanctions, which include a minimum ban of five years. In the early 80s, Kenya's quest to qualify for the 1984 Olympics ended at the hands of Libya. Harambe Stars, then under coach Marshall Mulwa, won the first leg played in Nairobi 1-0, but lost the return leg 2-0 in Tripoli. Decades later, this match is clouded with controversy. If you are able to don the national colors, then one is supposed to know that it is life or death. For free, we will do it. Just like the armed forces. And I stand to be corrected. A notion that veteran sports journalist Roy Gashohe disagrees with. Calls to patriotism are misplaced. How will you be patriotic and you've got no food on the table? You've got families, you've got loved ones to support, you've got yourself to support to begin with. You can't eat patriotism. You can't pay school fees with patriotism. Most recently, Harambe Star's unexpected 4-1 semi-final loss to Minos Eritrea in the 2019 Sakafa Senior Challenge Cup was a result that raised eyebrows. What about referees? Situations on the pitch have shown that refs can have huge impact on possible match outcomes, sometimes even bigger than the players themselves, which in turn makes the match officials prime candidates for possible corruption. 16th September 2012, Chemelil Sugar versus Osarian FC, a Kenyan Premier League match that ended one all and is a prime example of match fixing in the top flight by match officials. NTV Sport has obtained affidavits drawn by the Commissioner of Oaths and confirmed by the game's second assistant referee, admitting that he received 10,000 shillings, roughly $100, colloquially termed as lunch, from one of the team's then technical directors. I called the referee who was given the money. He denied, but fortunately, had got the the, ma the money transaction, and I told him, my friend, this is the proof that you are giving the money. Are you still insisting you are not given 10,000 shillings? This was to help the side get a win that would help their survival chances. The assistant referee states that he did not disclose this to the other match officials. something the centre referee seconds in his own declaration while stating his shock when the state director called him demanding for his money back after the stalemate result. The second assistant referee, who was bribed to fix the game eight years ago, still continues to officiate matches in Kenya. Fast forward six years later, and bribery ended the career of Kenya's topmost referee. What are your thoughts about Aden Maro? What do you think about him? Now for that one, 
the one from Marwa. Uh, please, tafadhali tuna. Wacha tuwacha mire. Aiden Marwa was to become the first Kenyan referee to officiate at a World Cup in 2018. Months before the showpiece, however, Marwa was filmed in a BBC investigative documentary receiving a 60,000 shillings bribe, roughly $600, to allegedly fix matches during the African Nations Championship, Chan, in Morocco. It's me who developed Marwa. I discovered Marwa's talent again in Germany. I was his match commissioner. And I mentored Marwa. Marwa is such a humble teacher. Believe you me, until I eventually got that thing and ran through the whole thing, I totally denied because I could not equate Marwa with such incident. Consequently, Marwa was handed a life ban from all football-related activities by CAF. I have tried to reach Marwa many times. He's not picking my call. The chemistry teacher turned referee is alleged to have taken a 60,000 Kenyan shillings bribe, but he lost out on 2.5 million shillings, roughly $25,000, that he would have made as a World Cup match official. Why should you destroy your future? 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 NTV tried to reach Marwa, but he was unavailable. In the local context, a centre referee officiating in the top tier or Kenyan Premier League earns 7,500 shillings per game, while National Super League or second tier referees take home 5,500 shillings per match, this according to the FKF. <laughs> and their already meager salaries are delayed, sometimes for months on end. Naturally, this can leave the match officials open to the temptation of corruption. And therefore you cannot say now, because there's a delay in remittance of your money, that there's a problem. But because what about the effect of being paid off by the clubs? Do you think that that undermines the level or quality so, of officiating? So let me tell you something, Aida. We have said to the referees, your money is coming, in the next two weeks, we shall pay you. But paying you in the next two weeks does not mean that we should not accumulate some five matches here and there going forward. You know that's how that career is. You know this would, and if you cannot do it, please say to us you cannot do it and stay away from it. For the sake of the viewer, Nick, yes. are there specific cases you can give yeah. of referees who've been, who've been stopped by the FKF we for bad officiating? In 20, in beginning 2018, mm -hmm. We stopped four referees from doing their job for six months. Uh, it was actually an executive order that we gave. Marwa may have been caught and banned, but he isn't the only top Kenyan referee suspected to have manipulated matches internationally. When he requested for referees from Kenya, FIFA referees from Kenya to officiate in a World Cup, warm-up match between the South Africa and Colombia uh, in Johannesburg. The Federation also appointed three referees uh, on his uh, behest. He said he's the one who's going to take care of the expenses and air tickets. That he, the, the Kenyan referees awarded two penalties, which were saved by the goalkeeper and the wire taken against Colombia, showing uh, uh, signs of match manipulation. And FIFA started doing investigations on the, those two, uh, three Kenyan referees who uh, got wind of the investigations from FIFA and resigned. One in particular, when they came back, uh, investigations from FIFA found out that he had bought a farm in Kitale and, and, and two tractors. How big of a role, if any, does sports betting play in match fixing in Kenya? za mpesa wakapata transaction zote vile nakuwa vile wana bet walipata kila kitu bet company inakuja na sema na sponsor team ma teams kumbe wao wamekuja biashara ya kutafuta hizo hela kwa njia yote sports betting is just cancer if there's a way of burning it that is the engine that drives this culture that's the engine that drives manipulation of games 
In a past interview with NTV, CEO of former top betting firm Sport Pesa contradicted such claims. When it comes to match fixing, you also have to look at it this way. As a betting company, we are the ones who have everything to lose if matches are fixed. So match fixing, I don't, for me right now, I don't think it will be a problem because I believe if anybody was going to fix the matches, they would have done it already. In fact, in the league, the officials, none of them are allowed to bet. Remember, we have all the phone number records, so we have their numbers, so first of all, that's, they're not allowed to bet. So I want to be clear that it is not betting companies normally who do match fixing. It is the people who want to win money from betting companies. With the uptake of online betting on sports in Kenya over the last decade, Kenyan football seems to have caught the eye of the bookmakers in the infamous Asian betting scene. Notorious international match fixer Perumal was from Singapore. The two companies that posed as sponsors for Sony Sugar FC and Sofa Paka FC with an aim to fix KPL matches were also found to have roots in Singapore. <laughs> Our Singapore, Singapore uko, yes. Ikakuwa kwa magazeti ya uko, na majina ya wakasema kwanza ule moja ni criminal kabisa huyo wa, wa mambo ya, ya inini, ya match fixing. Yeah. And bets are now not just placed on win, lose or draw results, but also on goals scored in a match, goals conceded, and such like variables which further erode the integrity of the sport. Ukienda kwenye games hizi ambazo ziko ziko mbali ambazo journalists tunakuwa peke yako kama hizi za Chemeli, Sony unapata uwanjani uko wewe peke yako. So some people approach you when a post kitu inaitwa live updates. As in game inavoendelea kutendeka mimi nazidi ku post. So if bao itaingia mimi nita post tu in a few minutes. So what these people want is they tell you u delay at least 5 minutes. Kwa ile bao ikiingia you tell them first alafu alafu baadaye ndo update kama 7 minutes. The catch is eh, uki, uki delay kama 5 minutes wao wanaweza ku place bets kwa the next team will score. While greed would be the quick answer to why match manipulation is so prevalent, it's important to analyze the problem at its core. You can't make a living out of sport if you are an African. <laughs> that is the problem. So we need to fix the environment within sport. And it's not just football, it's every sport. Um, where you can play, you can be a professional, and you can earn a basic, comfortable wage to live and make a livelihood of. The government needs to understand that investing in young people is one of the best things it could ever do. Sports can be a bulwark against big national problems. And as much as it may hurt for the fans who have invested in the game, the financial pain of match fixing might be even more for team authorities involved. Mimi nakwambia tunaumia kwa sababu tunatumia pesa. Kurun team sio mchezo kama kwa mfano Kakamega Homeboys tunalipa mshahara kila mwezi ni 1.5 million. Ukipiga hata kwa miezi 10 ni 15 million. Ujaweka ujaweka accommodation, ujaweka transport. From club to national level, current times to past generations, the scourge of match manipulation seems to have ingrained itself into the fabric of Kenyan football, leaving an ugly yet often invisible stain. It's here that the alleged fixed World Cup qualifier between Kenya and Nigeria took place. Well over a decade later, and the problem ensues. In light of recent national corruption scandals, protecting the integrity of sport should be a key agenda given top priority by relevant stakeholders. Aida Warenga, NTV Investigates.